What up? Kevin Boothby here. Wanted to do a short series of videos on engineless sailing, uh, especially uh, uh, long distance cruising uh, when you don't have an inboard engine and where you'll be presented with a lot of situations uh, which will be challenging uh, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have uh, inboard power. Um, and so what I want to do is present a, a series of set pieces, uh, basically situations where you would normally use your engine. Um, and I want to show you how you can do it uh, without an engine and do it safely and uh, without scaring yourself and everyone else half to death. Now the boat that I currently sail and live on and own uh, is 31 feet on deck. Um, she's gaff rigged, she's long keeled, and has no engine, never has had an engine. Um, and in the time that I've owned her, I've sailed her across the Pacific, in and out of islands and atolls, through the current swept Torres Strait, uh, down around the bottom of Africa, the south of Africa, and I've also done nine round trips between the East Coast and the Caribbean. Um, all that without an engine. So it's entirely possible to get almost anywhere you want to go without an engine. Um, now, one thing I've always had with this boat is a scowling oar, uh, which in, in my case is a 14-foot oar, uh, which is mounted off the stern, and that can be used uh, to maneuver the boat in close quarters, provided there's not too much wind. And I've also recently purchased a three and a half horse outboard for the dinghy, uh, which besi uh, besides helping to get me around, uh, means the dinghy can also be used as a yawl boat. Um, and again, um, that's only in sheltered waters where there's not too much wind. Um, otherwise, I'm sailing, which is more, much, which is greater than 99% of the time. So I hope you'll find these videos informative and uh, I hope they'll inspire you to hone your sailing skills uh, to the point where you know that you can, you can handle the situation uh, even if your engine quits at the wrong time. Um, and this will be, be a big confidence boost for you. Um, and also uh, you'll probably uh, earn a lot more respect from your crew that way if you sail with a crew uh, instead of having to get towed in, paying money, uh, wearing the bag of shame over your head, uh, you know, your engine quits and you can simply say to your crew, that's no problem. We'll sail in, drop anchor off the dock and warp her into the slip and uh, they will be quite impressed. Okay, so here we are getting underway on the Hampton River. Uh, and as you can see, I have an anchored boat close by on my starboard side. Um, and there's also a little bit of ebbing current which is pushing us upwind um, and which is pushing me toward that anchored boat. So I'm going to want to come around onto the other tack, starboard tack. As you can see, I'm doing that by pulling on the anchor because the anchor is uh, off on my port side. Um, and I'm going to want to take a short tack short toward the shore here, uh, just so I can be sure that I clear that other boat once I get sailing. Now as you can see, however, I don't have too much room here to sail on starboard tack, uh, because uh, it will show up toward that shore, which I'm pointing toward right now. Um, so it's going to have to be a quick, quick tack, and that's also further complicated by the fact that the uh, the winds in around here are rather light and fluky because the winds uh, we have a lot of as you can see we have a lot of buildings and land around which is uh, which is deflecting and, and causing turbulent wind. Okay, so we're anchors away, the anchors up, and uh, we're starting to sail very slowly on starboard tack. And as you can see, those light and fluky wind. You can see the mainsail is uh, uh, it's setting, and then and the wind will suddenly shift direction and it'll flop right as it's doing now. Oh, we got a little bit of a puff there, so and then the boat is just very slowly beginning to move, 
and uh, it's looking like we're far enough away from the other boat that I can bring her around on the other tack. Uh, so you can see I got the helm hard a lee now and she's slowly, slowly starting to come around. Uh, however, because she has so little way and these winds are fluky, um, I'm going to use the scowling oar to help get her around and I'm going to do that right about now. So the way you can get a boat to turn around uh, using the sculling oar uh, is simply to row with it um, as you would uh, uh, normally with, a, with an oar. And since it's mounted off the stern, uh, th this will turn the boat right around. It will turn her right on the proverbial dime. So as you can see, the boat is coming around nicely onto port tack. Uh, the boom is on the starboard side and we've got a little bit of wind. Um, so uh, we're starting we're starting to move here uh, but it's still it's still fluky and we're just gradually you know cheating that mainsail in and uh, actually I'm gonna end up using the scaling oar one more time here because this wind is gonna foil me it's gonna come forward so here we are right here and uh, it's gonna try to push me back on to starboard tack uh, where I don't want to go because um, I might uh, I might sail into that shore and run aground so here we are just just making sure to get her around onto the other tack okay so here we are we've come around onto port tack and we've cleared the other boat and right now I'm getting the staysail ready to raise uh, most boats um, especially with the wind forward of the beam their mainsails will not produce enough power uh, to really uh, to really drive them ahead, uh, you need a headsail or head sails. Uh, this boat is rigged as a cutter, so she has two headsails. Uh, but nonetheless, with just the addition of the staysail working together with the mainsail, um, she'll have a whole lot more power. And you'll see this in a minute. You'll see the way the boat accelerates uh, once I get that staysail sheeted in. And uh, get a few turns on that winch there, and. Uh, get it in the self-tailing mechanism and um, you know, we got tangled forward here, we got to clear the other sheet looks like it's tangled around the pin rail wave goodbye to the neighbors and uh, now w watch how this boat is accelerating um, and you can see she's heeling over a bit now uh, which just represents the power coming from the rig and um, uh, you get those two sails working together and the boat just really comes alive so now it's pretty much a short tacking drill. Uh, the wind is uh, almost dead ahead and uh, we have a narrow uh, winding channel here to, uh, to work our way out of. Uh, so we're just going to be taking short tacks back and forth. Um, we just passed the red day beacon here. I don't want to get too far over because we'll get into shallow water. Uh, the beacon right in the picture right now. So it's back over onto port tack and we got to sheet the staysail in. Um, also, this boat is gaff rigged, uh, and you cannot have a fixed backstay with a gaff rigger. So, you see, the thing I'm tugging on right now is the windward, it's the tackle on the windward backstay. Then I'm going to release the leeward one uh, right now. So, you basically have to uh, uh, you have to set up your backstays every time you come about, um, which is the nature of the rig. Now I know I have good water here all the way up to the dock and uh, when we sailors say good water what we mean is water that's deep enough for us to uh, navigate our boats on without running aground. Um, so you can sail right up to the boats here and uh, for some reason this always brings out the five-year-old kid in me who just wants to uh, play a game of chicken here, see how close I can get uh, and uh, freak out the adults, but uh, don't, uh, don't push that too far. Uh, so here we are. Uh, we're going to come around onto the other tack and continue our zigzag journey out the channel here. So here we are a few tacks later and we are now at the entrance to the harbor, uh, the river harbor. Um, now one thing you must be aware of whenever you're tacking out of a harbor that has a narrow entrance and, um, and then leads out into open water is um, how much of a swell there is um, and actually before I before I tacked out of here I went um, 
I went and investigated this in the dinghy. Uh, one was to check out what the wind, uh, what the wind looked like um, around the around the entrance to the harbor, but also to see if there was any swell, um, because if there is a swell rolling in. Um, that can uh, uh, that can slow the boat down, and if the winds are fairly light, and if you have some fickleness in the wind, um, it's possible that the swell can slow you down so much that uh, you might not be able to bring the boat about. Um, and of course, the other thing you got to watch out for, you see the speedboat going across the bow, is uh, wake thrown up by other boats. Uh, this is a fairly small boat, so his wake's not going to slow us too much. But uh, if, that, if that was a 40-foot sport fisher uh, going at that speed, he'd just about stop us dead. Um, so you, you, have to be, um, you have to be cognizant of that. Um, because uh, if the boat gets stopped, then you're not going to be able to bring around on the other tack. And then you're, you're going to end up going into these, uh, um, crashing into the pier, um, which is something you most definitely do not want to do. Now, if I'm looking a little bit nervous, um, that's because we're coming up right onto the right of the screen here, just past the end of that, that pier on the right, uh, is where I ran aground last time. And it's pretty much almost exactly the same uh, situation. Uh, you can see a little bit of a grimace on the face um, as, uh, as this one. And I just got a little too far off to the side of the channel, and uh, it shoals up very quickly, and bump, I was aground. And of course, it was on a falling tide. Um, so first, I hailed a passing um, uh, crab boat, sort of one of the more traditional boats, and uh, he was not—he uh, was not all that happy, um, not all that happy about towing a little yacht off the uh, off the mud there. And uh, I threw him my dock line, and then I attached the dock line to another short piece of line because I, I didn't have any long lines available on deck and um, so when, when he when he pulled on when he pulled on the line I think it was mostly the wash from his propeller was uh, was pushing against the hull and it created so much strain that the short line uh, that was attached to the dock line just broke in two and, uh, and then this guy just erupts and curses and, uh, and then hits the throttles and drives away with my dock line um, <laughs> so uh, well Sometimes decorum is lacking out here, uh, but anyway, um, uh, after that, another uh, another pleasure boat or a small power boat came by, uh, and he managed to uh, to pull me off no problem. Just just uh, gave the throttles a little bit of juice there, and she came right off. Um, so anyway, uh, th those things can happen, and uh, no damage, just. Uh, um, it was uh, a bit embarrassing and uh, uh, feeling a little bruised from uh, from the verbal abuse, but uh, we made it. So uh, so all's well that ends well, as they say. So we're almost out here. That uh, that green marker just on the very right hand side of the screen uh, marks the end of the narrow part of the channel. After that, we have uh, wide and easy waters, and of course, always wave to the friendly your other friendly sailors. And uh, so the job is almost done. So one more tack over to the green, uh, just to make sure that we can clear the red on the other side of the channel there. And, uh, and then we can relax, and uh, as we'll be out in wider, easier waters. Um, and we can begin to enjoy our afternoon of sailing, uh, which will actually turn out to be an overnight trip up to uh, Dennis Point, as it turns out.